Well, thank you for joining us for how to enjoy fall on the Blue Ridge Parkway. Um, I know it's easy to enjoy fall if you're out there, but it's easier if you have tips, especially from someone like Jay Scott Graham. He's a photographer. Um, if you've ever visited any of the park service stores um, or the stores along the parkway in the visitor centers, I'm sure you've seen his work, calendars, puzzles, everything else. Um, great photos from the parkway, from the Smokies. Um, he even does stuff in the uh, Caribbean. So um, he is just an astonishingly, astonishingly good photographer, I will say. Um, he actually has recently released a book. It's called Blue Ridge Parkway, A Magnificent Journey. So we're really excited about that. And we'll ask him a little bit more about where that's available. But I um, just wanted to let you say hi, Scott, to everyone and just say a couple words about yourself. Well, thank you, Rita. I appreciate the opportunity to be here and welcome everybody to the webinar. Hope you can pick up some interesting tips about fall colors that you can enjoy on your own journey. So let's get started with the questions. <laughs> All right. So I know you were out on the parkway yesterday and the question we get most here at the park uh, at the Parkway Foundation is when is the peak season? People always want to know. And I think it varies from year to year. And I think you can talk to that a little bit. I think peak season is now through the end of October. And that's, I know that's a broad window. People want to know the exact like date and time, but it's not that easy. For instance, yesterday I was at Graveyard Fields and in the hiking trails at Graveyard Fields, there's really good color showing right now. But if you stand at the overlook and look east towards the mountain, it's still really green. So when is peak color? It's kind of hard to say. Generally speaking, you want to follow the colors from north to south and from high elevations down to lower elevations. So if you're at Grandfather Mountain Milepost 305, the fall colors will be, become, be there earlier at Grandfather Mountain, but if you head on down towards, let's say, the Lincoln Viaduct, they'll come a little later. So typically speaking, second to third week in October is kind of middle of the bullseye, but you can see really good color right now, and I think given the current conditions, you're going to see some really good color through the end of the month. That's really great. Um, and we've been seeing pictures coming up from all different places, Bass Lake, different areas um, where it's starting to show. And so it's getting really exciting for folks out there. It was very um, busy yesterday. Yeah, <laughs> the parkway itself was, wasn't it? Yes, it was. And so a lot of folks wonder, should they try to enjoy the whole 469 miles of the parkway? Or do you recommend picking certain sections to go see during the fall? Uh, my answer to that is yes, <laughs> enjoy it all, but you enjoy the Blue Ridge Parkway because it's such a long park. It's unlike any other site in the national park system because it is so lengthy and so varied in its terrain, elevation, and, and really what you can experience. So you experience the entire thing by, by experiencing the different parts to it. Uh, Stanley Abbott said it was like, you know, pearls on a string, and that's a good way to describe the Blue Ridge Parkway. So you know, there's several different areas along the parkway that you can enjoy. And so you kind of enjoy the whole thing by enjoying bits and pieces of them. If you just have an afternoon, it's worth a drive. If you want to get out and hike a little bit or canoe in a lake or have some dinner, there's all of that you can do along the parkway. It just depends on how much time that you have. And you've spent a lot of time on the parkway. I just had to throw this in there because you've been doing this for 33 years. You've seen 33 uh -huh. autumns on the parkway. Um, where are some of the best places, your favorite places to enjoy autumn? Oh boy, I get that question quite a bit. And I guess it depends on where the leaves are good. Uh, it can be better in some places than others. So I just always try to find really good leaf color and generally try to find out those areas that maybe have a usually come turn a little earlier like right now again graveyard fields usually there's pretty good color in early october whereas you can go other places lower elevations and see good color you know towards the end of october so it just kind of depends um i think it's pretty obvious because the parkway as you drive it you can look up above you to the higher elevations and see color or down lower and see that it's still really green right now. So I think everybody kind of makes those decisions best just driving the parkway because you can see both at the same time. Um, I remember one of the first books I did with Elizabeth Hunter, she talked about 
uh, leaving Asheville and heading north up to Mount Mitchell and going from summer to fall to winter in one drive. So it's kind of hard to nail down exactly where the best colors are at any given time. I agree. I agree. I love going up to Mount Mitchell if I need to cool down and it's, <laughs> it's always a good place to be. Um, so do you have a certain type of weather that you prefer to shoot in during fall? I know some folks think, oh, it's rainy. I'm not going to go out. But do you have a have some suggestions about you know maybe venturing out when it doesn't look like um, a sunny day? Well, everybody kind of thinks that the clear sunny days, like the ones we're having right now, are the best time to take pictures, and they can be depending upon what you're shooting. But typically, I've always chanted the mantra: "The worse the weather, the better the shot." So <laughs> typically, I like to go out when it's not clear blue sunny. I like to go out when it's foggy is my favorite type of element to shoot in, uh, but kind of foggy, misty, rainy, because on overcast days, the colors are saturated um, because light is scattered. And so you don't have to deal with a lot of harsh contrast in your shooting, and it can make a long day for viewing images and shooting images. So typically I like overcast days. And if I can have a little light mist or rain uh, to kind of make rocks a little wet or trails a little bit more vivid. That's typically what I like to shoot in. So I, I look for kind of foggy, rainy days. Um, but, you know, sunshine's good too for sunrises, sunsets, or for that intense color early in the morning or late in the day. And if you're not taking pictures and you're just out driving, well, I would rather be out on a sunny, sunny blue cloud day. So it just kind of depends on on why you're out and what you're looking for. And you mentioned earlier that it was already picking up on the parkway with um, visitors coming. We've already seen a lot of folks driving up to the Parkway Visitor Center here in our offices. Um, how do you recommend avoiding the crowds during the busy fall season, especially when you're you're trying to take a photo and maybe somebody's standing in front of your camera? Um, do you have any tips for folks? Yeah, I think, you know, the Blue Ridge Parkway, as people well know, is the most visited unit in the national park system. So typically in a given year, 12 to 15 million people on the parkway. So there's kind of better times and worse times to visit. Uh, generally speaking, if you can avoid weekends and go during the weekdays, that's a little better. Uh, if you can get out early, then typically you're going to have some areas uh, primarily to yourself. Uh, trails and lakes and whatnot. So when I say early, you know, usually anytime before 10 o'clock, you're not going to see a lot of traffic. Midday traffic, 10 to 2, 10 to 3 is going to be the heaviest. And then depending on where you go, even late day traffic. So I, I would say get out early, go, you know, kind of middle of the week and you'll, you'll avoid the, the most busiest time of the parkway. Uh, but you can still, you know, you can still run into hordes of people depending upon where you're going and what you're doing. You can also kind of avoid people like there's a lot of people that will go to Linville Falls, which is milepost 316. Well, there's a large trail system at Linville Falls. So although it can be crowded, it's not like you're bumper to bumper in cars, like you're going around Cades Cove. You can get out, stretch your legs, and there can be a lot of people there, and it, but it can handle a lot of people. So I would also look for places like that. That's great. Yeah, there are some really popular trails, but getting, getting there first can, can really make a difference. Um, so we have had somebody ask, uh, if I want to explore some hiking trails, can you recommend an easy trail that you love or a challenging trail where you're going to get to see these fall colors? Yeah, I will say, um, one of my favorite places to hike, if you want easy trails, I'm, I'm going to point to three and I like lakes along the parkway. Most people don't think about lakes along the parkway. They think about mountain views. But if you if you go to I'll give you one in uh, one in Virginia and one in North Carolina. If you go to Peaks of Otter at milepost eighty six, there's a nice easy level one mile trail around the lake that gives you phenomenal views of the peaks of Otter, and it's an easy an easy trail to to take. Um, it also gives you some nice reflections of the lake for fall colors. And then the other one will be Price Lake, kind of the same thing, a little bit longer trail. Uh, but in North Carolina, I would go to Price Lake, um, and it's a, it's a very easy one-way meandering trail, and you'll see a lot of good fall colors there. 
So those are two kind of easier trails that have easy access and have facilities uh, to use restrooms or a pizza bottle. You can even eat breakfast, lunch, or dinner if you want to when you're done. So I would kind of point people there if you're looking for kind of an easy trail and you want kind of a leg stretcher, um, I would I would go to Peaks of Otter, Abbott Lake, and, and then Price Lake. And if you really challenge yourself, is there some is there a place that you feel like is a a real challenge to get up to? Yeah, I think uh, uh, in again you know, I give you a Virginia and a North Carolina answer. Virginia Humpback Rocks is uh, if you want to hike up to the rock, it's a it's a pretty steep trail to get up there, but the views are amazing. Uh, also, Peaks of Otter, I'll give you a second one in Virginia at Milepost 86. You can take the bus up to Sharp Top or you can hike it. And if you take the bus, they just dump you out at the top, which is great. But you can, it's a nice trail to hike up and back, but it's a longer, steeper trail if you do that. Um, and then in North Carolina, actually uh, just off the parkway, Grandfather Mountain State Park, you can access that and get up on some beautiful peaks in Grandfather Mountain and have phenomenal views of the Blue Ridge Parkway and the surrounding mountains. So, but that, that trail requires some pretty steep climbs. It, it utilizes ladders. So it's not for the faint of heart, but it is a much more challenging trail. It is, and I have tried that one. <laughs> I did not finish because the, the fog rolled in and I needed to get back to my car, but that is, uh, yeah, that'll have your heart pounding in a good way though. Yes. So I agree. Um, do you feel like there are any challenging aspects of shooting in the fall, things, to, things folks should think about before they go out? I think the most challenging thing is always being at the right place at the right time. And I've been doing this 33 years and that challenge never goes away. So it's just kind of trying to find out, you know, where the leaves are nice, uh, where those images come about and that kind of thing. So I could use this time to mention that uh, I'm going to be doing along with the Blue Ridge Parkway Foundation some, some daily fall color reports, uh, I don't know about every day, but two or three times a week. And we're gonna post live videos of me at various places showing you what the fall colors look like at various places along the Blue Ridge Parkway. Uh, we did one yesterday at Graveyard Fields that we'll post sometime, I think in the next day or two, but it will have a live video and some images from that particular place. So if you all want to follow that, then that's the best way to kind of figure out what the colors are doing where. And I'll be at pretty much, I won't be at every place along the parkway, but I'll be at plenty of places in Virginia and plenty of places in North Carolina throughout the next three weeks looking for fall colors and we'll, and we'll be posting some videos about those. And we are super excited about that because, you know, the parkway is so long and it's uh, it's great that a Scott is out there like he is out there all the time. So we can't wait to get these reports out and help you guys find um, good places to go or maybe tell you where is not ready and you can go later. Um, or what's peaked and you need to move on and pick a different location for your fall trip. Right. right. Um, so the videos, somebody just asked where will the videos be posted and we're going to be putting those on uh, our social media. So if you go ahead and follow us on Instagram um, and Facebook, we'll be making those available, um, particularly on Instagram. Um, and yeah, we're going to start, we're going to start that today or tomorrow with a report from Graveyard Fields. Um, so we have a question here that says, I love your photos and you probably use a pro, pro high-end camera. Um, do you have any suggestions on good camera brands and types of cameras uh, for the non-professional? Huh. Well, uh, honestly, if you have a smartphone, it's amazing what you can take on a smartphone. So that's the most, that's the easiest way to shoot. If you want a little bit more serious camera, obviously brands like Canon and Nikon are really good to use. I use a Canon 5D Mark IV myself, but uh, there's a lot of good brands, but typically if you kind of stick with Canon and Nikon, they're good, but there's there's plenty of other good brands out there as well. So it depends upon how, how serious you want to be. Yeah. Yep. Is there a particular lens that you recommend people have or a, a couple lenses that will get you what, you know, different perspectives? Uh, I, I have three lenses. Uh, I have a wide angle I have a macro lens, which lets me shoot really close up shots of things. And then I have a, a long telephoto lens. I actually have two long telephoto lenses, so I have four lenses. But that gets me every shot I need to shoot. 
uh, if, if people just have one lens, a, a zoom lens, it's maybe a wide angle to medium telephoto, like a 25 millimeter, 24 millimeter to like 100 millimeter. You can put that on in front of your camera and shoot just about anything you need to shoot. Fantastic. Fantastic. You're taking me back to my photography class days. <laughs> <laughs> um, and do you have any tips for just getting great photos? I'll give you one good one. Uh, <laughs> I've never, I've never, I get this question a lot too. I've never taken a good picture sitting in my office. <laughs> so my tip is get out there. You, you can't take pictures sitting at home. The only way you can take good pictures is to get out there and explore the Blue Ridge Parkway. There's no substitute for that. And you'll be amazed. I've been exploring the Blue Ridge Parkway for 33 years. And I've been everywhere and shot everything and you think I'd be done. And I am surprised every single time I travel the Blue Ridge Parkway, I find things I've never seen before. So the best tip I have for taking good pictures is to get out there and see what you can find. That's great. That's great. Cause you just gotta get started. That's all you have to do is get out there and get started. That's wonderful. Um, is fall your favorite season? You, you take pictures all year round, you, you know, and it's fall's favorite for most people. Is fall your favorite season? Um, most people know Dabo Sweeney. He's the head football coach of Clemson University, and he has a saying he likes to pass along to his players, and that is this, be where your feet are. And I've always found that to be good advice because you want to be present in whatever moment you're in. And I pass it along to you as an answer to your question because – my favorite season is whatever I'm shooting at any particular time. I'm, my favorite season is wherever my feet are. So right now, my favorite season is fall. But when those snowflakes start flowing in December and January, my favorite season will be winter. And when the trilliums start blooming in April, my favorite season will be spring. And when the rhododendron bloom in June, my favorite season will be summer. So that's my answer. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. So we had a great talk the other day before uh, we started this webinar, and um, I was wondering if it, you could tell us, we've just heard, um, we're hearing a lot about bears being active, and if you could tell us a little bit about what you've experienced with bears on the parkway. I don't see bears as often along the parkway as I see them in Great Smoky Mountains National Park when I shoot down there. Uh, however, I do run into bears on the parkway, usually because they're scrambling across the road. Uh, more often, I hear bears before I see them because they're like a bull in a china shop. They make all kind of racket. Um, <laughs> in, in my book, I have one funny story about a bear where I was up on the Blue Ridge Parkway south of Asheville, and I was looking for sunrise shots, and I was at an overlook, and, I, and all of a sudden, a bear, I couldn't have been more than 10 feet away, he popped up, he startled me, I startled him, and he took off running. And I went over to where he was and he was eating a bunch of blackberries. So I was able to eat some very tasty blackberries and shoot a very tasty sunrise <laughs> where that bear was. But that's about as close as an, of an encounter as I've had with the parkway, uh, seeing a bear on the parkway. Uh, typically, like I said, they're not as, you don't run across them as often. Um, but I do see them. And when you're out, you are out in nature. I mean, you're on a road, but to your left and to your right is the wild. <laughs> so they're there. You just don't run into them very often. And I will say this about bears too. Normally, they just want to get out of your way. It's not something you should be scared of, but you should also not try to get too close to them or try to tempt them with your peanut butter and jelly sandwich or try to climb on them and take a selfie. Just respect their distance and they'll pretty much just stay away from you. That's great. That's what we found as well. We have bears that roam by our office and, and we love to see them, but we also love to keep our distance. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I have a question. Um, I love the photos, the, um, I love photos with the blue colors of our mountains. What atmospheric conditions and times of day are best for capturing the blue in the Blue Ridge Mountains? Uh, there, that's, there's several answers to that. Uh, you can get the Blue Mountains in a lot of different conditions. Uh, one way is if it's a really cloudy day, uh, that's some of the best times to see the detail in the blues and kind of let them 
uh, you know, if they're in the background. So, so overcast days can be that way. Uh, if you can get them before sunrise or after sunrise, uh, sunset, excuse me, then you can get some blue colors in, uh, in, in that time of day. Uh, typically, you know, if it's a, if it's a sunny day and you've got blue skies and the, I'm gonna get kind of technical on here and the, the sun is kind of 90 degrees away from your view you can use a polarizing filter to kind of bring out some of those vivid colors in, in the mountains as well, but it operates best when you're looking 90 degrees from where the sun is. So those are just uh, some, of the, some of the ways you can do it. I will tell you this, sometimes you wanna underexpose your images and that will help bring out those mountains because they're a lot brighter than they look. And typically if you expose too bright, they'll kind of fade into the distance. So you need to kind of underexpose your shots a little bit and that will help bring out some of those blues. Okay, great. Yeah, I mean, that is what describes us and <laughs> uh, those blue skies and then the blue that you can see in those mountains. Um, Let's see, we've got a few more questions coming in. There are, um, someone is asking about where the videos are gonna be shown. And if you're looking for the foundation Instagram account, it is BRPKWY Foundation. Um, so that at BRPKWY Foundation is our account. Um, and we can send that out. We'll also send out a link to the, um, to this recording and we will include that in there for you guys to have our direct accounts that you can just click on and follow us. Should be great. Let's see. Do you have any tips for organizing and archiving 30 years of photos? <laughs> Very specific, but you have that 30 wow. plus years. Uh, I'll put you, I gave you a little secret. I have a, a, one of my graphic designers does all that for me. So all the, we have, a, I have a huge library of images and every time I download them, uh, I'll edit them here and I have external hard drives to keep kind of the raw files on, but anything that we use to put into production, uh, is, is sent to him and he, he takes care of all that. We have a, we have a huge numbering system that identifies specific photos, like the one you're looking at right there, I can tell you is number 4488, Linville Falls. <laughs> and so anytime we use that, that's how we do it is with a numbering system. That way we can retrieve an image pretty quickly. But uh, I keep mine on, I keep the raw files on an external hard drive, but then the ones that we actually put into production, which is quite a few, then those are sent to my graphic designer. And he has a, a huge library of images that we, have organized by uh, geographic location. So even within our Blue Ridge Parkway folder, we'll have folders for water, trees, road, mountains, sunrise, sunset, that type of thing. And it helps us retrieve images pretty quickly. That's great. I think we can all use that. Yeah. <laughs> use some of those. Uh, I will tactics. say one more thing with that. You got to keep them organized as you go. Otherwise, it gets too overwhelming. Yeah. So let's see. Um, someone has said, I have seen your pictures every day for 20 years on my computer screensaver, which is pretty wow. amazing. <laughs> Do you plan an update on a, or a similar product? So I'm not yeah. sure. Um, we did screensavers back in the day before anybody had screensavers. And now everybody can kind of do their own or they come with computers or they're easily down. You can download them off the internet. I've been asked for that. The we I sold a there was about a five year period where screensavers were my best selling product, and we sold a bazillion of them. But the uh, they kind of waned and the market changed, and the company that used to produce the software for my screensavers went out of business. So we haven't found a suitable replacement for that. And I think that was also before the age of social media, where you can see images almost daily. And it doesn't serve as a screensaver, but it still gives you kind of a, a daily taste of images. Um, I've looked into doing re resurrecting a screensaver, but I'm not quite sure we can do it in such a way so that the images are authenticated and also not stolen. And that was another big issue is could if we put them on a screensaver, could people steal them and use them other places? So there's kind of a fine line there. We haven't resurrected them, 
but there's that's a couple of the issues that we're looking at uh, when we consider that particular product. I do get asked quite a bit though. <laughs> Um, so a lot of folks um, have, well, at least one person has asked about, you know, finding the best shots that are not at overlooks, but various other points. And they have asked if it's okay to pull off into the grass. Now, um, I know that the Park Service is kind of making a concerted effort to um, discourage that because it can be unsafe and it can um, lead to some erosion and then you have a big drop off on the side of the road but maybe you have some other suggestions of you know where to where to find places that are not necessarily the overlooks yeah I think it's I think pulling off on the on the grass is by and large permissible I know there's there's sections north of Asheville where you're on a watershed where they don't want you to pull off in the grass and that those things are posted. Um, I think the biggest issue for pulling off in some of the grassy areas along the parkway is make sure it's a big grassy area, meaning you've got to have room to safely get off and safely get back on without blocking traffic. I will say the other thing is it needs to be a very level grassy area. Uh, typically, the grassy areas can have long grass in them because they don't mow them like it's a manicured lawn. So I've seen a lot of people get stuck because they it either slopes off down the parkway or it's too steep. And so they get kind of stuck in where they're doing. I was actually by Moses Cone a couple weeks ago and the lady was stuck that had pulled off the side of the road. And it was a very level stretch of parkway, but the grassy area sloped down away from the parkway and she was stuck and couldn't get out. They had to pull her out. So I would just say, if you're not gonna pull her over at an overlook, just make sure you try to find a nice, safe, flat, area to do so. And then the other thing you have to watch for is there are drainage ditches, big gullies along the parkway uh, in different places. So make sure you're not trying to cross one of those as you pull out. Yeah, thank you for that. That is a really good safety tip. It's just one of those things of knowing your terrain and where you're shooting. So I, I appreciate that. Um, well, we're winding down on time, so I just wanted to ask you really quickly if you could tell us a little bit about your book and where it's available, because I know it's not a screensaver, but it is a, a great resource to have, and you have some incredible stories in there. Thank you. It's called uh, Blue Ridge Parkway, A Magnificent Journey. Uh, it just came out. Uh, it is available at all Blue Ridge Parkway visitor centers, along with other concessionaires along the park, like Pisgah Inn gift shop, Mount Metro State Park gift shops. Uh, we're, we just sent an order out to Peaks of Otter, so you can get it there in a day or two. Maybe Mill has them. So anywhere along the parkway, you should be able to find them. And then we've got it at various retail locations along the parkway. Uh, if you're not along the parkway or live outside of the area, you can just go to my website, jscottgram.com. That's the letter J and two T's in Scott. So it's J-S-C-O-T-T-G-R-A-H-A-M com and order them there we ship out orders daily you can see calendars as well and other products but that's where it is uh, i will say too this is the first time i've published a book in nine years i, I did the Ridge parkway's first coffee table book several years ago and then we followed up with guidebooks and other coffee table books but this is the first book i've done in about nine years and in the book besides pictures and captions i share some personal stories it's kind of like a diary of what goes on behind the scenes and taking images that I think people will find interesting. So it retails for $16.99. It's 80 pages long. Every copy's uh, autographed, so it's kind of a nice personal touch. So if you get a copy, I hope you enjoy it. Great. Thank you very much. And, and Scott has been a great supporter of the Parkway Foundation and helped us on our fundraising efforts and been a great supporter of the parkway and um, using it responsibly. So I wanted to say thank you to you for that as well. Um, we did have a few questions that we didn't get to and I apologize for that, but we're trying to be respectful of folks' time. What I might do is just uh, talk with Scott after this and see if maybe we can answer some of these in like a video form or even send them out in the email, um, including what are your top three favorite images and why, which would be a fun <laughs> answer. <laughs> So thank you all for joining us. As we said, again, this is going to be available on our YouTube channel. Um, but if you signed up and if you participated, so if you have a friend that signed up and wasn't able to attend, they will still get a link to our video once it's posted on YouTube and it should be up in just a few days. So thank you for joining us. I hope you have an awesome autumn and um, we will talk to you again. Thank you. <laughs>